Yeah. What up, everybody? I want to thank you for checking in with your boy PRism and following me along. All my shoe reviews that I've been doing for you guys. Naturally, these are shoes that I actually hoop in, so I want to make sure that I let everybody know. Thank you and shout out for those who actually put miles on their shoes on a basketball court. And for those who just want to wear them for swag, that's fine as well. As you can see by the background imagery there, me hooping, playing basketball, full court, five on five. So we keep it active. And these shoe reviews are essentially based on actual activity and actually trying them out. So I would like to call them more so performance reviews for everybody out there who actually do take their basketball shoes on court and actually put miles on their soles. With that being said, let's get into the actual shoe itself. As we open up the box, you'll notice, of course, you're gonna have your kind of waxed over. If we can get a little scintillation on that, it's like a waxed over cover. That says Elite, got the Nike swoosh on it. It's kind of triangular cut. And we open up into the physical shoe. This was the colorway that I was most anticipating when I saw it before the shoe actually came out. With this shoe, and what makes it different from the other one is that it's the Elite. The Elite has a little bit of a veil on the top here that wraps around on the entire ankle portion of it. Based on the fact that I'm wearing black, it's very difficult to see. But you'll notice you have that veil over on the top there that actually wraps over the top of the ankle, which makes it more of a high top as opposed to a low top that you pull the top. So this is more of a mid, I would say. Not like the older Elite that wraps way up on top of the actual calf. This one stops right over on the Achilles. At first, I thought it was gonna be kind of flimsy, and it really is, but the difference is that since it does have an elastic type of material, it actually does wrap around the foot very well as far as around my ankle. Does it give me support? I'm not gonna say that, but what it does is that it actually does hold the shoe onto the foot and kind of gives it that one-to-one -one feel which is pretty cool, kind of locks it in a little bit. I didn't think that it was gonna have any ankle protection simply because, well, it's just a piece of fabric. Of course, it's not gonna give you any ankle protection per se, but I appreciated it more than the low top version, which you have to kind of slip onto your foot and hope that it has locked down based on the fact that it's low. The reason why these were slightly different from those as well is that it also has this kind of thick fly wire on the side this thick fly wire essentially acts as a suspension for you so that when you're cutting side to side against your opponent on court, you're able to get that suspension and keep you locked into the shoe as opposed to overlapping the sole, as you see here, the midsole. Then of course, you'll notice you got the full length zoom, which I wanted to use because of the fact that I had been playing basketball outdoors recently. And on the concrete, I felt right over on the front ball of my foot some bruising based on playing outdoors. Not on this particular shoe. It was a shoe that was a low top Kobe Elite. And I felt the earth hitting onto the foot when I was jumping up to try to attempt to dunk uh, in game. With that being said, these, I was attempting to make sure that I had the ultimate comfort featured by that full length zoom. So when we look at the aesthetics of it, it's actually a pretty slick looking shoe. In fact, before this shoe came out, this colorway was the one that I was interested in initially. So I was able to find it on Foot Locker, everybody. So you know, 99 bucks. It shows up as 150. Came over to this Foot Locker slash House of Hoops to pick it up. Would I be able to go ahead and get it for that $99 price point that I saw it at the other Foot Locker for? They price checked it and he matched it for me right on the spot. I was able to walk out with this KD Elite for only $99.99, which I'm pretty happy about as far as the purchase goes because aesthetically, it's a pretty raw looking shoe and it does have a lot of tech. One of the things that I appreciated about it as far as traction goes is that if you notice these traction patterns, they're octagonal and they're able, well, hexagonal and they're able to actually get some very good traction. One of the things that I didn't appreciate about it is that since they are so good with the traction, on hardwood, on concrete, it doesn't feel the same, obviously, but on hardwood, I'm able to get very good traction because of the rubber that it's made out of. Unfortunately, however, since the top portion of the shoe is made out of a fabric, I wanna say it's a fly knit fabric that's on top, and this uh, suspension system that they have here on the lateral side of it, the, the fly wire, 
for me, I guess at my weight, or maybe it's the power of my legs as I propel myself going sideways when I go side to side cut and try to actually break ankles in that fashion, I felt as if I was going to roll over the midsole on my first application on court. The reason being is because in my first application, I chose not to tighten up the actual shoestring so I didn't get the true suspension that it was meant to have on that first application. So second time around, I experimented with actually tying my shoestrings here and I realized that the fly wire was more effective and I didn't have that rollover on the midsole here on this section. With that being said, however, is that I did get a little bit of digging because the fly wire has these little sockets here that the fly wire actually goes into and I felt a little dig in here off on the side bone of my pinky toe. So I noticed that that was a little bit of discomfort but it wasn't enough to make me stop playing in the shoe per se. Also, there's a split here in the sole that allows you to get an individual pivot as you move, shoot, jump, and run. Well, that's what we're lacking in uh, comfort regarding the air bubble because we lose that portion of the air bubble, the zoom unit, right at that piece. And I was feeling most of the bruising from my previous experience in the older shoes on the concrete floor right around that area of the foot. I was really relying on it and I was thinking I was gonna get some support there as far as the cushioning goes with the zoom unit, but I didn't really feel that. Um, I wanna say it definitely buffered the bruising effect that I was feeling previously by about 60%. So at least I guess it gave me some and some is better than no protection on that ball of the foot. So essentially, when I look at the actual construction of the shoe, I would say I would give it about an eight overall because of the fact that the materials on top and the materials on bottom are slightly mismatched in the aspect that the material on top is a very flexible and a soft material, and so is the material on the bottom. But with that being said, when you combine that, with a hardwood floor, you're gonna get excellent traction on the bottom, but you're gonna get the flexibility on top to where you feel like you may roll over the, the midsole just slightly. But if you're able to tie the shoe to where you feel comfort on the instep, because remember, this shoe doesn't have a tongue. So there's no separation between the midsole and the top portion and separating the tongue from the midsole, I'm sorry, the, the upper. So it's, a, it's, it's basically like a sock that you slap on. So if you don't feel the discomfort in the instep, which I didn't have any problem with, essentially beginning sliding it on, it's a little tough. You gotta really kind of wiggle your foot into it because it doesn't have that tongue. So you really gotta get it into that shoe slot there, that foot slot. But once it's on, it, it's, a, it's a good snug fit. But with that being said, since it does have that snug fit, it's easy to kind of roll over the top of the midsole if you don't use this fly wire suspension properly by tying your shoes. <laughs> so what I would suggest guys, tie the shoe so you could actually get the proper suspension the way it was meant to be and you can get that kind of lockdown that's given by this fly wire off on the top based on utilizing your shoestrings to bring that in. But you want to be careful because you want to bring it into the point where it's not really locking your instep in so tight where you have discomfort. So you want to make sure you have that, that happy medium to where you're not deforming the shoe based on tying it so tight, but you want to make it hug the foot properly so that you get the proper suspension so that you're not rolling over your midsole based on the fact that the traction is so good tied into the fact that you have an air, full length air zoom. Since that's elevating your foot, you're supposed to sink into the shoe bed based on tying it down, but not too much to where you get a good lockdown and you sink into the shoe bed. Unfortunately, if you don't, the air bubble kind of elevates you a little higher up on the midsole, which gives you the ability to roll over the midsole with the fact that the shoe has such good traction and the top portion, the upper, utilizing the fly wire doesn't lock you into the shoe. Hopefully that doesn't go over your head, but basically there's so much traction that it's easy to roll over the midsole when the shoe's not tight. So if I put it in a basic sense, I would try to find that happy medium to where you can tie the shoe in a fashion where you feel comfortable and you're not deforming and disfiguring the shoe where it's too tight, but it actually wraps around your foot precisely based on where these shoestring eyelets wrap around the foot 
based on the shape of your individual foot. So you wanna make sure you take that in consideration, tie them up to your specific recommendation. You'll figure that out, and then you'll be able to have some happy hooping right in these KD9 Elites. Hopefully you enjoyed the shoe review. I was able to hoop in it two times separately on hardwood. I could definitely see myself keeping these after the first application, but after the second application, when I found that I could tie them up in a way where it wasn't too tight nor loose, I was able to get a better lock into the shoe bed based on the fact that the top of the shoe was bringing me down into that full length zoom unit, thereby not allowing the superior traction to rock me over the shoe midsole. Other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. If you like the video, subscribe and share with your friends if they're interested in getting yourself a KD9 Elite. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people because you know he's got the championship, so congratulations to him. That's not the reason why I got this shoe. The reason why I got this shoe is because the other Nike shoes that I like, I already own, and this is the only one that I hadn't had the opportunity to own thus far, but since it went on sale, it was very difficult to deny owning this particular model of the KD. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys soon in the next vlog.